All right, we brought Keith back for this uh, because we love the technical <laughs> stuff. Artificial intelligence continues to evolve at a rapid pace. The latest breakthrough shows how AI can generate images in our brains. This is a weird one. <laughs> NBC's Jake Ward has the details. On the campus of the National University of Singapore, Professor Helen Zhao and a team of researchers say artificial intelligence is letting them see, well, a version of our thoughts. This subject demonstrated the process. Our colleague uh, Eric right now is inside the scanner. Using a database of fMRI scans, the AI first got to see what people's brains looked like as they viewed more than 1,000 photos. Then it was shown only brain scans as the subjects looked at new photos. Using a special language of brain activity the team developed, an image generator called Stable Diffusion then tried to recreate what each new photo had shown. Wow, so as long as I have seen it and you know the patterns of my brain, then the AI will read that out of my brain. Yes, 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 yes. exactly. Scientists have pursued this for years, but AI makes the difference. Here's a giraffe shown to a subject. Now, ready? Here's the image the AI created. And it is sometimes very different between people. Here's the original image of a grassy field. Now here's three different versions generated from three different people's brain activity. Now, what you're seeing is a recording of previous scans, not a real-time demonstration. And this process is slow, it requires an expensive machine, and it has to be individually tailored. So unless you have taken a long time to train the model on an individual, it doesn't work. Yes, yes. at least at this stage. But we're trying to generalize across subjects in the future. And that future is upon us. At the University of Texas, another team is learning to pull word sequences using a similar technique. And a multi-university team last year found that in fMRI tests, these regions of the brain reliably predicted whether a subject leaned liberal or conservative. It is all part of a grand scientific ambition to decode and maybe even transmit thought, to restore lost sight and hearing, to observe consciousness itself. But research is one thing. I worry that it quickly leaves that realm of well-meaning scientists to uh, commodification of deeply personal information about people. The last 30 years have seen an explosion of new brain tech companies and patent applications. Now, as AI makes the tech smaller and more powerful, Duke Law Professor Nita Faranahi worries they'll be used to not just read our minds, but to judge them. This is a world in which not just your brain activity is being collected and your brain states from attention to focus is being monitored, but people are being uh, hired and fired and promoted based on what their brain metrics show. Even for the team leader in Singapore, the prospect of a corporate use of this technology without privacy laws in place is too risky. Are you the kind of person that would want to wait for better governance before you let somebody decode your brain? I might be the person who wants to try. I think once it is a commercialized product, for example, then we, I would like to wait a little bit. Mind reading, with all its unthinkable promise and peril, made real. Jake Ward, NBC News. I, okay, I'm with the second woman who spoke of, it makes me nervous that you would be able to read minds. Right. Where does yeah. that step right, take like us? This, right. We can't even handle Facebook and Twitter. I mean, <laughs> right. I, I think it's, back a little. it's totally, really the, like, I think the professor put it well, like it may be well-meaning, there are positive Absolutely. things that could be done sure. with it, but we see how that sometimes goes. And you know I'm pro-technology, but that one's a little, that's a big leap. It's a little yeah. dicey. Let's keep it a little bit more grounded for now. I want to show you this video I saw on Twitter. I thought it was amazing. So the, this guy, he had a Tesla and had a dash cam that records when it's driving itself. Now he pointed out it, it dodged this tire, but I want to show you the oh collision <gasps> Can you believe that? that happens. Good news, the person in that car that just went flying was okay. Otherwise we would not show this. Um, but it is, so the car dodged the tire, it picked up on that object, whereas I think your average driver would be Probably looking would so much at what happened there. Right. And also, it took me a while to figure out what's going on here, guys. So obviously that, that truck loses a tire Ooh. and it's right in front of the... And that's what launches yes. the car, is it hits the rolling tire. Yeah. And oh, then the tire gosh. comes back and hits the car again, by the way. Yes, no, it, does. Oh, it yep. does yeah. watch us. to injury. And it's because I think it was, it was torqued by the, by the uh, oh, Kia miss hitting it. it. We miss it coming back. Anywho, um, wild. I saw that video and I was like, "Whoa! I've never seen anything." And now. the Tesla like that. knew to to go around the 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 tire. I think that's one area. You know, we've talked about this at length. I'm pro 
self-driving. And unfortunately, some of the headlines where it goes awry and it does happen, it hits yeah. stuff, um, are nice. going to be part of the process to get to a place where they can drive themselves. And I, I believe that it will be better. I agree with you. I more and more, I'm like, we need self-driving cars. There's so right. much distraction. <laughs> that it's like. yeah. I think we could just stop the distraction. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Just uh, go look out on Congress I Square know. at Everybody's every stoplight and see what people are doing. Yeah, and yeah I think yeah. we need to get there.